So, in part six, let's examine um, some very important words. And the word here is Tashima. And from here, you have a breakdown of so many other words that come out of it. All right. And that's pretty common within languages that I consider high context. All right. Now, look at the word up there. Tashima. Okay. A very interesting word. Now, before I go down and start to explain to you why I brought this word up. In fact, I think this is the first thing that we should have covered before I even covered other parallels. Now, Toshima is very important because it not only brings out the staple diet of ancient Egyptians, okay? It will also, you know, be able to show you where some of these ancient Egyptians may have fled to based on that same diet, okay? Other than language. Language is an important way to track migration patterns, okay? But there's also other things that will come in material culture, food, you know, you know, worldview. There's so many other things. So now, let's cover the concept of a staple meal, all right? Now, if you look, excuse me. If you look up there, you see Tashima, the first one means the south land of Upper Egypt. And if you look with every hieroglyph, it's, it has a different component. And in Kiswahili Bantu, you see Tashima is the land producing the Shima grain. That's what um, Fergus Shaman um, alludes to it as being, okay? Ancient Egyptian, of course, you have S. HMA, which is the continent Shema, meaning the south, the country of the south. That's so that's Shema. And then in ancient Egyptian again, Shema, where you, it looks like somebody's pouring something out of a barrel, all right? Shema is the grain of the south, okay? I think he got that from E.A. Wallace Barge, all right? So, and he even says, uh, he compares that to Burley. Okay, the Burley of Upper Egypt, and I think he got that from, from Faulkner. All right. And Tashima, the last one, is really the Southland of Upper Egypt. All right. Now, it's pretty interesting, okay, and, and Fargo Shaman does point this out, the concept of the grain of the South. All right. So I'm going to read for you an excerpt by Fargo Shaman of what the staple diet may have been. Now, as you can see from the picture over there, you can see that there are people threshing grain in ancient Egypt. Of course, being that it was a staple food and they used, you know, donkeys and ox, of course, to be able to do that job. Now, the word Shima, being that it's comparable to, you know, um, cereal in that sense, all right? The one thing, when I saw this, and of course, Fergus does, does point this out. The first time when I did see the word Shema, all I could think about was the word Sima in Swahili. Okay, so in Kiswahili Bantu, the word for the staple diet, it's unleavened bread made with only water and flour, and it's not only eaten, all right, in east africa but to parts of south africa as well as west africa although with west africa they don't um call it necessarily shema i mean they have the fufu but it's still the same thing i mean same drift right all right so you have the grain from the south called shema all right and then you have kiswahili bantu the word is sima all right now, in Ekewusi, the word becomes Kima, okay? So, Obo Kima, Kima. So, a phonetic variation happens from the word Shema, Swahili Sima, Ekewusi Kima, all right? Um, you'll, also parts, you'll also find in parts of South Africa where that phonetic variation varies, but it's still the same name, Chima. Kima, 
Shima, it's the same thing. So you will find that within Eastern and Southern Africa. Ain't it funny that this grain was also called the grain of the South, okay? Now, the South is towards East and Southern Africa. Well, depending on how you look at it. All right. Now, Fergus Shaman, of course, um, does make a, a very important commentary. And he does say the staple diet of countries in Eastern and Southern Africa is corn, maize, or sorghum. And the grain is extracted from a cob and pounded to produce flour. The, the flour is used to make a thick porridge uh, that's eaten with meat and vegetables. This staple meal made from corn, sorghum, millet or cassava is called shima or sima. The symbolism of the flowering sage or reed plant was used to form the hieroglyphs showing grain being poured out from a container seen here as shima. All right? So let me, ladies and gentlemen, let me entice you with one of the oldest staples, okay? Running all the way from ancient Egypt to Eastern and Southern Africa and parts of West Africa, okay? This is Shima or Kima or Rima, depending on where you come from, all right? Usually eaten with greens, vegetables, and of course, meat. Meat, so good with that, okay? Especially grilled meat, all right? And examine that sumptuous meal, okay, of chima or kima or shima with greens and fish, all right? Now, it will be interesting if uh, Mr. Hawaz and company and the other elite Egyptians would give us a parallel for this grain in their language or that staple diet in their language, because clearly... The Bantus have maintained it, and 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 some of the Congonizer languages, all right. But it's not only the Bantus. I'm just saying Bantu because that's the language I speak. Nilots have that, um, and also Kushiriks have that, all right. So this is just a staple to me. This is what I'd call a sub-Saharan staple, you know, food. The chima, okay. The sauces may vary, but it's that chima, all right. Now. How is it then? How is it possible we're getting too Afrocentric with our message? Eve, even the name for the food and the stable diet is of African descent. All right? Where did this mixed children come from who invaded Egypt and now want to claim it as their own? Okay? And they have the nerves to say they want nothing to do with Afrocentrism. But the food was Afrocentric and so was the language. So who are you? Let's start asking questions because there is a lot some of these elites have to tell us. Okay? So tune in for part seven. Shalom Salama to